I've redone the line one last time. Um, again, cleaning it up, making sure I'm really happy with it. I'm just redoing one side of the model. And each time I make a piece, I'll do the exact same piece on the other side because the spaces are actually identical. So I don't need to redo the lines on both sides. The only thing I have to be very careful of is that the bow and stern, the two planks line up exactly at the same height. Having redrawn the line, I'm still gonna come back and put uh, a thread on it just to make sure I'm happy with it. And what we're looking for again is nice clean lines. And the only place I had a bit of a problem was at the bow. Um, and at the end, what I did is I put the small French ruler and I managed to get a nice clean curve. But when I put a plank on the model, I'm going to get that nice clean line that I'm looking for. So just to re-establish, there are fully fi five planks, including the garboard. So that means we're now going to fit four planks. And to make sure I got the measurement exactly based on the line that I have, I'm going to take key measurements off of the model. Um, so 1.45 and divide it by four. Well, we've learned so much about cutting difficult parts. First thing we're going to do is rough cut a piece of cardboard stick it on to the model and using our little protractor and then we'll use this to cut the piece out. Well, this marks my first use of the tabletop sander. No mess, easy to use, much better than a spiral sander to do these curves. The first challenge I have is trying to get this piece um, to, uh, to bend and curve. It's a complex um, bend, um, not three dimensions, but two, because we've cut the curve into the piece, but we need to try and get it to flatten, um, to line up with the garboard streak. So to do this, we're using some long planks and we're pushing the top of the plank down and then we're gonna heat it. As you can see, there are much less clamps now that we're sticking it, and that's because we were able to get the bend to lock in place using the blow dryer. One of the um, tricks I learned, and it was quite interesting that um, Greg actually pointed it out to me in an email, is that when you're trying to fit the planks, um, particularly where there is a lot of bending, um, the, the edges of the two planks may not line up exactly. So the, one might be at an angle like that, the other one might be at an angle like that. And so one of the techniques is to take the bottom edge and run the, run the plane on it 
and cut it off to make sure that when you put the two pieces together, you get a really nice tight join. One of the main challenges we have is making sure that the planks at the bow and the stern line are perfectly. And I found this clamp an excellent way of doing that because it allows me to adjust it. And I'm not sure if you can actually see it. So this gives me the exact point of the top of the plank on the side. And the same thing on this side. Now switching it around, here is the top of the plank at the stern and on the other side. So again, it's just a foolproof way. Um, I know we mark the pieces, um, but when you get old, your eyesight is not great. Just make sure you're 100% accurate every time. Another little technique I've developed is in putting these planks down is to cut the the plank oversize and fit it so that it goes beyond where the back joint is gonna gonna be this is by about four feet um, we know that there is a, another joint here and so what we do is we get a perfectly tapered piece that we're gonna cut here on the chop saw and I know that this piece and this piece are it will join exactly at the right size so I have no sanding to do when I'm trying to join this piece I'll still have that to make up on the end here but not on this one so it just saves time and makes for a more accurate cut Having made up the starboard side, we're going to make up a rough template for the port side. Now, we should notice that when we take this off, the piece should hold its shape. So it's not perfect, but pretty close to perfect. And again, we can see we need a little, uh, a little adjustment on the bow piece. So we just need a small amount of sanding here. Okay. 
Right, and that really gives us a nice tight fit. And we can now stick that. And I almost forgot, um, you'll see I put a join here and it's a false join. And I tend to put false joins when there's a lot of bending on the plug. And that really just helps me get a nice clean line when I'm coming to put the next streak on. Um, so it's your choice. Um, in the past, I've actually cut pieces like this and then joined them and was never really happy. So this, in effect, is putting two pieces of the streak in. Um, it's cut to the right size. So now we can just stick it. Well, we're doing the other side and uh, we've bent it in place and it's almost fitting with no clamps. Again, you can look and see the bend. Um, once you carve in the piece, um, this is the bend that the heat put on it and you get a really nice comfortable fit so that you don't have to pull on the clamps very heavy. I remember early in my modeling days when I would be fixing a difficult piece, uh, bending it, heating it. Um, then I finally got it right and I would look and say, oh gosh, it's short four feet. How could I make such a mistake? I tried to get it right the first time, but seldom ever happens. Um, so it's a perfect example. Um, of, of trying to refine uh, the end piece here of this plank. And um, it's short of, of where I wanted it. And it's really no issue at all to me as a modeler. I'm just glad I got it right and I got it to fit it and it's bent perfectly. Um, but the, the, the truth is that's just part of the process. Um, so here we have a piece that really fits perfectly, hardly with any clamp pressure at all, a little bit, um, that I've shaped and bent and measured, and I'm going to have to throw it away, um, simply use it as a template to make the final piece. We've bent the part and it's fitting very nice, but typical, and again, the, the problem that plagues us throughout this build is it's been built oversized. So now we have a bent piece and a flat um, plane. And how do we get the line back? Well, you need to get something that's flexible and bendy. Um, so I just happen to have this and clamp it in place on your lines, clamp on either side, and then just take a pencil and run it along the piece because this flexible piece is going to follow the shape um, of the of the streak and give you a line and so now you can come back and either sand it i really enjoy using the plane because i end up with a nice level surface and so we're now going to take that down quite a bit and again just to confirm we're taking down the bottom piece because we have our line, our reference line at the bottom um, to guide us through. So we've got a perfect fit on this side. So we just need to take it down, in this case, about a sixteenth of an inch. So now we're on the final piece, streak number five, 
and we are going to just highlight some of the little challenges that, um, that we find um, as we put this last piece in. In the past, when we were doing planking, um, you will see that sometimes you get uh, a real tight bend, particularly when you're bending pieces in. And in this case, um, I just put this ruler here um, because it highlights the, the bump or the bend, and it's right here. And in, on the bottom side, it's actually right opposite that. So what we want to do is flatten out um, these bumps so we get, again, a nice clean transition. Um, in the past, you've seen me do some corrections, actually, on the model where I would saw these pieces off. But I'm much smarter now. And I actually look for these bumps and take them down before I stick the piece. So we're not too concerned with this one. We're really concerned with this one here. Now, I took measurements off the model and at this stage here we have eight foot eight inches and when we measured from the top here down to the, the bottom straight there we get seven foot ten inches um, so there's a ten inch um, gap and what we're trying to do is get these this space as close to um, it is possible so we don't have a board that's weaving all over the place um, so it was really quite simple we bent the piece inside and we're putting the ruler on and then we'll just shave off this piece before we stick it and make sure we have a nice clean transition here in this case i will actually sand just a little bit at this point um, I have a special file that has no grit on one side and just a grit on this side. And so that allows me to file the piece without affecting the frames. This is the last piece in this set of five strips, and um, you'll notice that I did this one again slightly differently than I just told you how to do um, strips or planks that require a lot of bending. Um, and, and the reason for that is really very simple. I wanted to save some wood. Um, why? Because I could. Um, I wasn't saving the wood for money. I was saving the wood because I could. We're fairly close to the line that we put in and I'm really very happy with that. This is the last piece in the first band of streaks on the bottle on the bottom of the model. And um, really, when you think back at it, there were no real challenges at all um, getting this done. Um, not that there were no challenges, but there were no major challenges. So again, what we did in this band, which was really quite, um, quite challenging, and this band um, leads us to realize that to finish the last two bands, there really is no real big issue um, in front of us. Prior to undertaking this exercise, I always felt a little intimidating um, trying to live up to the standard of um, Greg and David. Um, but it's really not been that bad. There were a few, a few difficulties, um, but we got through that all right. And even though I haven't cleaned it up yet, 
um, I'm really happy with the final result. If there's a lesson to be learned out of this exercise for me, it was the need to um, pre-cut the curve into the planks and then to heat bend them in place so that when I came to put the piece, clamp the piece on the model, uh, not a lot of pressure was required, which meant the clamping exercise, which can be difficult, wasn't that hard to do. And the key to that was really having lots of these planks, um, wider planks available um, to cut the curve into the piece. So that being said, I hope you found this again very useful and we'll see you as we take off the last two bands. bands. So keep modeling. We'll see you soon.